You know, Ignatius is a very hard person to get to know. I think I really know him. And you get inside of him from the way he acts, more than from what he writes. He's, um, he's a person who just has big ideas, crazy, almost dreamy ideas. And you say, well, all of us sometime or other seem to have those kinds of ideas. And uh, I think that's really great. He never loses that. He was a man given to the vanities of the world. And what he enjoyed most was warlike sport, with a great and foolish desire to win fame. Inigo Lopez de Loyola, who later took the name Ignatius, was the youngest son of a nobleman of the mountainous Basque province of northern Spain. Trained in the courtly manner of the time of King Ferdinand, he dreamed of the glories of knighthood and wore his sword and breastplate with a proud arrogance. When Ignatius was born in 1491, you were just ending basically the Middle Ages and you were certainly entering into the Renaissance. So he was a man on the edge of two worlds. Europe of the late 15th century was a world of discovery and invention. European explorers sailed west to the Americas and south to Africa, and scholars uncovered the buried civilizations of Greece and Rome. The printing press fed a new hunger for knowledge among a growing middle class. It was the end of chivalry and the rise of a new humanism. It was a time of radical change, social upheaval, and war. In a quixotic attempt to defend the border fortress of Pamplona against the French artillery, Inigo's right leg was shattered by a cannonball. His French captors, impressed by Inigo's courage, carried him on a litter to his family home at Loyola. His condition was serious, and all the doctors and surgeons who were summoned from many places decided that the leg should be broken again and the bones reset. He never said a word, nor showed any sign of pain other than clenching his fists. Inigo had only two books to fill the months of his convalescence, The Life of Christ and The Lives of the Saints. His imagination stirred, and he began to examine himself. In the course of his convalescence, he had a series of experiences of the immediacy and the love of God uh, that completely changed his life. He had a whole series of daydreams. He'd dream of great feats of arms. He'd think about that for a while. Then he'd daydream about doing great things for God. And then he began asking himself, uh, what's the result of these daydreams? The terms he used, what brings me desolation and what brings me consolation? When do I feel good at the end of these dreams and which kind? 